From 1955 to 1967, U.S. Army Intelligence at Edgewood Arsenal was secretly testing the use of LSD and its effect as an aid in interrogation. The Army discovered that the combination of LSD and emotional stress was psychologically destructive. With enough stress, some victims would even beg to be killed. In one experiment, this actually happened with three out of eight subjects. LSD was administered by the Army to more than 600 Americans. All had volunteered to participate in a drug testing program, and all had signed a form of consent. All that is, but one. A U.S. Army private stationed in France named James Thornwell. The Army had accused Thornwell of stealing some classified documents. The charges were finally dropped, but before they were, Thornwell was subjected to treatment so bizarre, the Army said it would cause them extensive, unfavorable publicity if word ever got out. Now it has. Tonight, 60 Minutes opens the Thornwell file. They had had me in protected custody in isolation for about six weeks, and I didn't know money from... James Thornwell was voted the most popular student in his high school, had won a four-year scholarship to college, and was called by his army sergeant the finest private he had ever served with. Today, at 41, Thornwell is unable to hold a job and survives only through the generosity of friends. He is a psychological cripple. I know one day for the next. What happened to James Thornwell has been verified by more than 1,000 pages of official U.S. Army documents obtained through the Freedom of Information Act. The story they reveal is unique. It began in 1961 in Orléans, France, where Thornwell was stationed with his army unit. Thornwell had been accused of stealing those missing army documents. He repeatedly denied the theft, but he was imprisoned and questioned for three months. Then, as a desperate last resort, he was given LSD, taken to this old mill, and interrogated by a special army intelligence team who were experimenting with LSD as a truth serum. That Thornwell had no motive for stealing the documents, that there was no evidence against him, didn't stop the army from using Thornwell as a guinea pig, from subjecting him to unbearable stress while under the LSD, and from concealing for 16 years afterwards his exposure to the drug. Nor, it seems, did the army ever stop to consider the traumatic effect all of this might have years later on Thornwell's mind. 17 years. Can't even talk about it. I can't even talk about it. Do you want to talk about it, Jim? Uh, I mean, I just keep shutting my life. I just keep closing doors to the past. And, uh... Thornwell has a therapy session each week with his psychologist, Dr. Paul Berg, who's donated more than 100 hours of his time helping Thornwell cope with what has happened to him. You know, I had to... All the years I had to keep fighting, telling myself that I wasn't crazy, and everybody was telling me that I was crazy. Anybody that would have gone through what you went through would have come out some terrible way, Jim. Do you understand that it's not you? It's what happened to you. Why is this so painful? Mr. Thornwell is a man who, by appearance, looks like every other man. I think you couldn't tell the difference in just looking at him. But if you examine him, you'd find out that he's missing, missing a lot of things that most people have. He's missing memories. He's missing interest. He's missing ambition, enthusiasm. He misses feelings. I worked on a job. I was a bus driver. That's the strangest job. And I worked on Miami Beach where a lot of tourists, and they was beautiful people, fantastic people. They was happy, enjoying life, had money to go on vacation. They was happy with the world. And uh, I would just do some of the most outrageous things, like I would stop the bus and walk away and leave a bus load of passengers, or I'll get upset and throw half the and all the half the passengers off the bus. And, just outrageous things. Uh, that was Thornwell's first year out of the Army. For the next 16 years, he became a transient, living the life of a drifter. Throughout it all, he felt alone, on edge, unable to trust anyone. There were two marriages, two children, two breakups, and a helpless feeling that life was passing him by. Ever since 1961, Thornwell had been bothered by what had been done to him. 
He didn't know he'd been given LSD, didn't even suspect it. All he knew is that something terrible had occurred that night at the old mill. By 1976, he was living here in San Francisco, still working off and on at odd jobs. He had given up all hope of ever finding out what had happened to him. Then a letter arrived. It was from the U.S. government, and it advised Thornwell that the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, was trying to locate him in connection with a medical testing program in which he had participated at Edgewood Arsenal. Thornwell was mystified. He had never been at Edgewood Arsenal, had never even heard of it, and he had no idea why the Surgeon General wanted to find him. So he had a lawyer, right to the IRS, right to the Army. For nine months, no answer. The lawyer then filed a Freedom of Information Act request. And finally, a year later, in 1977, Thornwell received documents revealing to him for the first time that he had been given LSD by the Army 16 years ago at the old mill in Orléans, France. This is not just uh, break-ins of people's homes. It's not just invasions of privacy by illegal wiretapping. This is uh, an invasion of a person's mind, a physical invasion of a person's mind. And uh, uh, that is about as uh, profound uh, an injury, uh, except for loss of life, that the government can impose. Thornwell's Washington attorney, Terry Linsner. The fact that uh, the government did it, uh, the fact that the government uh, ha did not uh, recognize the seriousness of what it did at the time that it, the incident occurred, that it let 17 years elapse uh, and still failed to uh, recognize the seriousness of the problem, and today uh, fails to agree that it has any moral or legal obligation to this kind of individual, uh, is why I think uh, people ought to be concerned about it. Lenzner is suing the Army on Thornwell's behalf for $10 million. The Army refused to discuss the Thornwell case with 60 Minutes. But the Army's own documents graphically describe Thornwell's three-month ordeal. Sustained interrogation, deprivation of food, drink, sleep, or bodily evacuation, sustained isolation, verbal degradation, and bodily discomfort, dramatized threats to subject's life. Before he went in the Army, why well, me and him could sit down and talk and... Uh, and, uh, and he could talk about things that, and, and I could reason with him. But after he came out of the army, we could talk and it didn't make no sense. There is a sadness about the Thornwell story that has left a mark on his family. Father, mother, sister, and aunt all noticed a change in James after he returned from the army. A change that, until recently, neither he nor they could explain. So I think his mind had been damaged or um, mostly destroyed seem like he just don't even seem like my brother anymore he just just seemed to be lost it seemed to me like that that the army would would uh, uh would be more careful than than that way i see it i know what they're giving a the person to keep from uh affecting them anyway i think james could have would have been a lawyer or a doctor or something because he had the education and I believe he would have put it to some good use if it had, if this hadn't occurred. I worked with the drama club, the French club, whatever. I was a troop leader for the Boy Scouts. Um, I was a member of the 4-H club. I won a public speaking contest. In the 4-H club? Yes, I got a trip to Washington, D.C., uh, which was quite an achievement for me because I'm a stutterer. And when I was a kid, I had to go to speech therapy before I could talk and to win a public speaking contest was really outstanding. James Thornwell grew up in Boiling Springs, South Carolina. He went to school just down the road from here, used to pick peaches from these trees. Thornwell was born in this house, which, in an ironic twist of fate, bears the same name as the place in France where Thornwell was given LSD. This eerie omen casts the only shadow on a normal, happy childhood. I was quite active in high school because you had to do these things. I was very popular. I was voted most popular when I finished high school. I was not an introverted kid. I was into everything. Oh, I was very confident. When they didn't vote me the most likely to succeed, it almost broke my heart. He was a person who was a high achiever, who was excelling, a scholarship student, a young black man that was on the verge of working his way out of being another young black man in the South of the 1950s. That kind of background, those kinds of traits do not lead to the decimated person you see now unless something happened. I 